Hello grade 9 learners! Welcome to another video lesson where you will surely learn, enjoy, and see the wonder of science. I am Ms. Ira Bianca Cortez and I will be your teacher for today. But before we proceed, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for updates. And for our lesson today, our most essential learning competency is Infer that heat transfer can be used to do work and that work involves a release of heat. Alright, so are you ready to learn? Come on, let us explore the world of physics. Thermodynamics is a study of heat and its transformation into work. It is the field of physics that deals with the relationship between heat and other properties in a substance. It focuses largely on how heat transfer is related to various changes within a physical system undergoing a thermodynamic process. Such processes usually result in work being done by the system and are guided by the laws of thermodynamics. To begin with, I have here two pictures, a hot coffee and an ice cream. Will you please tell me which of the two would be hot to touch and cold to touch? Right! Of course, the hot coffee would feel hot when touched and the ice cream would feel cold to touch. Do you know why? It is because the temperature of a hot coffee is higher than the normal body temperature of 37 degrees Celsius, while the temperature of an ice cream is lower than 37 degrees Celsius. When we touch a cup of a hot coffee, heat flows from the hotter cup to the cooler hand. And when we touch an ice cream, heat again flows from hot to cold. In this case, from the warmer hand into the cooler object or the ice cream. In a natural process, like our examples a while ago, heat flows from a hotter object to a cooler object when the two objects are placed in contact. It follows the second law of thermodynamics, which states that heat will never of itself flow from a cold temperature to a hot temperature object. And if we want to make heat flow in the reverse direction, an external effort must be done. In physics, we call this effort as work. Work has to be done in order to make the heat flow in the opposite direction. And how can we do a reverse? We need a device that will provide work to be done in the system. A heat pump is used to reverse the process. The result when work is done on the system is, heat is extracted from a low temperature source and rejected to a high temperature source. It may sound hard, but actually, we see this process almost every day because there is a practical application of this process. One of the most famous applications is the refrigerator. The typical analysis of the thermodynamic system in a refrigerator is focused on a working fluid called a refrigerant that circulates around the loop. There are mechanisms in the loop that raise or lower the refrigerant's temperature. Now, let's get into the equipment that helps execute the job. There are certainly other components in most loops, but most would agree the four fundamental elements of a basic cycle are as follows. First is the compressor. It is a piece of equipment that increases the pressure of the working gas. The refrigerant enters the compressor as a low-pressure, low-temperature gas and leaves the compressor as a high-pressure, high-temperature gas. Next is the condenser. The condenser or condenser coil is one of the two types of heat exchangers used in a basic refrigeration loop. This component is supplied with a high-temperature, high-pressure, vaporized refrigerant coming off the compressor. The condenser removes heat from the hot refrigerant vapor, gas vapor, until it condenses into a saturated liquid state. 
This process is also known as condensation. Next in line is the expansion valve. This creates a drop in pressure after the refrigerant leaves the condenser. This pressure drop will cause some of the refrigerant to quickly boil, creating a two-phase mixture. Lastly, the evaporator. The evaporator absorbs heat and this happens when refrigerant enters the evaporator as a low temperature liquid at low pressure. And a fan forces air across the evaporator's fins, cooling the air by absorbing the heat from the space in question into the refrigerant. After doing so, the refrigerant is sent back to the compressor where the process restarts. At this juncture, let us analyze the picture, then identify the parts of an air conditioning unit and compare it to the parts of the refrigeration cycle. Do they have the same parts? Correct! Both of them is consist of a compressor, condenser, expansion valve, and an evaporator, which mechanisms are almost the same. An air conditioning unit functions as a thermal pump that removes heat from the house and exhausts it outside where it is hotter. Now, let us check what you have learned by answering our learning task. Are you ready? That's great! Arrange the following in the correct order to completely discuss how a refrigerator works. Alright, let us check if you get the correct answer. And the correct order is D, C, D, A. Wow, that was fun! You really did a great job! That's all for today's lesson. And once again, I'm Ms. Ira Bianca Cortez from Francisco P. Felix Memorial National High School.